What up, guys? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, February 6, 2018. We're delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R A Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Alden Ehrenreich portrays a young Han Solo who dreams of becoming the best pilot in the galaxy in the first teaser trailer for Solo, a Star Wars story. The clip released Monday on Good Morning America dives into the iconic Star Wars character's past as he, alongside Chewbacca, joins a team put together by Woody Harrelson for a special job that includes Amelia Clark, Tanny Newton, and Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian. Enric says, I've been running scams on the street since I was 10, taking on the role made famous by Harrison Ford, who says about his past. The trailer also includes Enric and his team navigate through a slew of tentacles and enemy ships while piloting the Millennium Falcon. Enric says, I thought we were in trouble there for a second, but it's fine, before winking following a close call. Solo, a Star Wars story, is directed by Ron Howard, who took over the directing duties in June in place of filmmakers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who are booted off the project over different creative visions. The film is set to hit theaters on May 25th. Tom Cruise is back as Ethan Hunt in the first trailer for Paramount's upcoming sixth entry in their long-running action series Mission Impossible Fallout. The clip first released during the Super Bowl but then expanded online with the longer runtime features crews face dire consequences from an IMF mission gone wrong, including a standoff with a returning Rebecca Ferguson. Cruz's allies consist of franchise star Simon Pegg, Ving Rames, and Alec Baldwin also returning along with new characters played by Angela Bassett and Superman star Henry Cavill. The trailer includes looks at the film's numerous action scenes, which includes Cruz dangling outside a helicopter followed by a chase and the actor getting involved in a destructive bathroom brawl that also includes Cavill. Fallout from Mission Impossible's Rogue Nation helmer Christopher McCrary is set to arrive in theaters on July 27th. Danny McBride's mysterious Dundee project was unveiled to be a commercial for Australian tourism and not a sequel to Paul Hogan's Crocodile Dundee Sunday during the Super Bowl. A new trailer for Dundee premiered during the big game and featured McBride once again as the American son of Crocodile Dundee, who teams up with Chris Hemsworth to find his missing father in the Outback. As McBride and Hemsworth's journey unfolds, the eastbound and down star realizes he is not actually in a movie, but rather an ad that promotes the best Australia has to offer in including beaches and wieners. Hemsworth says to the disappointed McBride, but listen, you're the best Crocodile Dundee since Crocodile Dundee, before uh, the commercial cuts to Hogan as the iconic film character who makes a face. Uh, McBride said to Business Insider, it wasn't like I was looking to do a Super Bowl commercial, but I just thought the concept of this was just too funny to see what people's reaction would be like. Uh, he meant by talking about the project that led people to believe that a film sequel to Crocodile Dundee was coming. He said, I just sat back and watched the whole thing unfold. A previous trailer for Dundee, the son of a legend returns, announced the rest of the cast for the fake movie, which included Hollywood stars from Australia, such as Hugh Jackman, Ro- Margot Robbie, Isla Fisher, Ruby Rose, Liam Hemsworth, Jessica Mulboy, Luke Bracey, and Russell Crowe. Dwayne Johnson scales the world's tallest building in order to save his family in the first trailer for the upcoming action thriller Skyscraper. The clip released on the Tonight Show Sunday night, followed, the, followed by the Super Bowl, stars Johnson as a retired military veteran with a prosthetic leg who is on assignment as a security advisor inside a 200-plus story building that is housing his wife and two kids inside. A group of terrorists then suddenly attack and take over the building, along with taking Johnson's family hostage. But his family's life on the line, Johnson is seen jumping off a crane in order to begin moving through the massive structure. Johnson says to the building's owners before the action starts, you built the tallest, most advanced building in the world, but you've brought it with every single safety and security challenge that I cannot think of. But not only have you brought them all indoors, but you've trapped them 240 floors in the air. Skyscraper, which also stars Nev Campbell, is set to arrive in theaters on July 13th. 
Netflix surprised film fans by releasing the thriller The Cloverfield Paradox without advance notice on Super Bowl Sunday. Netflix tweeted, It's here after the Philadelphia Eagles beat the New England Patriots 41-33. to Directed by Julius Onan and produced by J.J. Abrams and Lindsay Weber, the movie previously known as God Particle stars Daniel Brühl, Roger Davies, Elizabeth Debicki, Anne Scoheny, Guba Mathara, Chris Dow. John Ortiz, David Oyeloyo, and Zhang Zigi. It follows 2008's Cloverfield and 2016's 10 Cloverfield Lane. A synopsis from the streaming service says about the latest Cloverfield installment, in the near future, a group of international astronauts on a space station are working to solve a massive energy crisis on Earth. The experimental technology abroad the state station has an unexpected result, leaving the team isolated and fighting for their lives. Filmmaker Ava DuVernay and Jordan Peele celebrate on Twitter the film's debut. Um, the Duvernay tweeted, Woman of Color-led sci-fi thriller released worldwide day and date with big Netflix muscle for black director, his super producer, and POC cast. No advanced press ads, thrillers, straight to the people. Game changer. Congrats to Helmer. Hashtag Julius Onan and my dear JJ Gugu David. Hashtag Cloverfield. Peel wrote in his own post, Always here for Cloverfield. Very excited to see what Julius Onan has done. Ryan Murphy's series, The Politician, has found a home at Netflix. The 52-year producer's rep confirmed the streaming site gave a two-season order to the new musical comedy, according to Variety. The publication said Netflix declined to comment. Deadline reported Netflix acquired The Politician after a week-long bidding war with Hulu, Amazon, and other top streaming companies. Netflix previously picked up Murphy's series, Ratchet. The Politician is described as a one-hour comedy featuring social comedy. The series will star Dear Evan Hansen star Ben Platt with Barbara Streisand and Gwyneth Paltrow reportedly in negotiations to co-stars. So as I said, Platt will play a wealthy man with political aspirations. The 24-year-old actor, who is expected to perform musical numbers in several episodes of the show, confirmed news of the Netflix deal Monday. Platt tweeted, I've been actually waiting to share this news with the world, life, and at Mr. R.P. Murphy are but a dream. We're going to kick your socks off. See you on at Netflix. HBO released the first trailer for season two of Westworld, which included confirmation that the sci-fi western will be returning on April 22nd. The clip first released during the Super Bowl, but then expanding online with the longer runtime, features star Evan Rachel Wood delivering a narration about building a new world alongside a footage of Westworld's sweeping vistas and open ranges. Uh, what is character Dolores Abernathy says, We built this world together, a world where dreams come true, a world where you can be free. This world is a lie. This world deserves to die because this is your world. We live by your rules long enough. We can save this world. We can burn it to the ground and from the ashes build a new world or our world. Tanny Newton is also featured in the trailer leading a pack of robotic built bulls as they run through the theme park's hidden labs, taking out an armed uh, soldier in the process. Westworld Season 2 has its production suspended in November after an unidentified actor suffered from a medical emergency. Shooting was also put on hold briefly in December due to the wildfires that affected Southern California. The cast of NBC's This Is Us including Milo Ventimiglia, Sterling K. Brown, Mandy Moore, Justin Hartley, and Chrissy Metz appeared on The Tonight Show Sunday following the airing of an emotional episode that explained how Ventimiglia's Jack Pearson died. Host Jimmy Fallon discussed the episode which aired following the Super Bowl and gathered the cast around a camera to comfort America with some, a symbolic hug. Uh, Fallon said alongside the cast who proclaimed we love you guys i feel like after the episode i need a hug from you guys and america needs a hug ventimiglia is seen in the episode rescuing his family from a fire that started in their home by a faulty crock pot he rushes back into the house to save the family dog and appears to have survived the ordeal until he dies from cardiac arrest at a hospital due to inhaling too much smoke Ventimiglia said about the length NBC went on to ensure that the events from the episode would remain secret. It was very secretive. We had scripts that were on red paper because they can't be photocopied. We had a password when we were talking about the actual event. Uh, Ventimiglia shared on Twitter that Jack Pearson will still be featured on This Is Us in the future. He says, just so everyone knows it, hashtag Jack Pearson lives in all of our hearts. 
He's you. He's me. He's us. Thank you all for supporting our show. We love you all. And this isn't the end of Jack. Stay tuned. Giselle Bunchin consoled husband and New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady after a Super Bowl 52 on Sunday. The 37 year old Brazilian model and 8 year old son Benjamin greeted Brady with a big hug following the Patriots' loss to the Philadelphia Eagles at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Bunchin captioned a photo on Instagram of her moment with Brady. Congratulations, Eagles, for winning the Super Bowl. What a game that was. He also added, she also added, congratulations, Patriots, for giving your best and to my love. We're incredibly proud of you because we are able to see every day all the commitment, sacrifice, and hard work that you have devoted to becoming the best in what you do. We love you. Uh, Nick Foles led the Eagles to a 41-33 win over Brady and the Patriots on Sunday. Brady, who has signed with the Patriots through the 2019 season, discussed his future with the NFL in a pregame interview with Westwood One. The 40-year-old NFL star says, Yeah, you're going to see me play football next year. I don't envision not playing. You're at the end of the race, but you've got your biggest mountain to climb right at the end. Bunchen and Brady will celebrate their ninth wedding anniversary on February 26. Brady shares Benjamin and five-year-old daughter Vivian and with Bunchen, and is also parents to 10-year-old son John with Bridget Monahan. In a related story, Bradley Cooper spent Sunday animately cheering on the Philadelphia Eagles at Super Bowl 52. The 43-year-old actor's enthusiasm was infectious as he watched the Eagles play the New England Patriots at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, Cooper was spotted clapping, pointing, and making faces as he watched the game with girlfriend Irina Shack. The couple were seated next to Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie and also met up with actors Miles Teller and his fiance Kaylee Speary. Uh, Speary captioned a photo of the group on Instagram, the OG Eagle fans, hashtag Diddy Diddy Go at Bradley Cooper and Irina Shack. Cooper, who was born in Philadelphia, has been an Eagles fan since childhood. He says in an interview with the Philadelphia's Inquirer in January that his late father, Charles Cooper, inspired his love for the team. The star recalled of the watching the past games, we brought the TV into the kitchen so we wouldn't miss anything. Cooper's character in the 2012 movie Silver Linings Playbook was also a Eagles fan. Cooper would next voice Rocket in Avengers Infinity War and will also star in A Star is Born with Lady Gaga. Chris Jenner shared a laugh with Crazy Teigen after accidentally breaking the model's table at a Super Bowl party. Teigen playfully called out Jenner in a Snapchat video Sunday after the 62-year-old reality star ran into her coffee table. Uh, Teigen said, If anyone's in the market for a slightly used table, the Chrissy Teigen actually just fell into it, said while showing the damage to the table, it's customized. Jenner added, This is where I did a face plant, showing a makeup stain on Teigen's couch. The television personality held an ice pack to her arm, but was all smiles to the camera. Uh, Teigen and her husband, singer John Legend, hosted the party for their family and friends. The model, who said in August that she was cutting back on drinking, told her 9.6 million Twitter followers that she refrained from alcohol at the event. Uh, Teigen wrote, This could have uh, everything to do with the fact that I'm not drinking, but this feels very uneventful. Uh, She also added, After the Philadelphia Eagles beat the New England Patriots, my house is so happy. Everyone is now apparently the biggest Eagles fan. I, I don't care, so please don't yell at me. Thank you. Jenner attended the bash the same day her daughter Kylie Jenner announced she gave birth to a baby girl February 1st. Jenner's daughter, Khloe Kardashian, subsequently posted a photo of herself and Kylie showing their baby bumps. Bindi Irwin says her new TV series will uphold late dad Steve Irwin's legacy. The 19-year-old Australian television personality reacted Sunday after Animal Planet promoted her family's upcoming show with footage of the crocodile hunter who died at the age of 44 in 2006 during Super Bowl 52. Uh, Bindi captioned the clip on Instagram. My first time watching this footage was only a few days ago. I don't think I'll ever be able to describe the amount of emotion in my heart once the video ended. My dad, my superhero. She also added, I promise to do my best to make you proud and ensure your legacy lives on forever. A new chapter in our lives has begun as we embark on this journey with at Animal Planet. There's so much on the horizon. We can't wait to share our story as a family. 
hashtag wildlife warriors. The footage shows an emotional Steve voice his hope to ultimately entrust his conservation efforts to Bindi and her younger brother Robert. The star said, if there is anything in this world that would make me want to give away what I'm doing now, yes, there is. He added, when my children can take the football that I call wildlife conservation and run it up, when, they, when they're ready to run it up on our mission, I will gladly step aside and I guarantee you it would be the proudest moment of my life. Bendy will star in the new Animal Planet series with Robert and their mom, Terry Irwin. The trio help oversee the Australian Zoo in Birwa, Australia, which Steve's parents opened in 1970. Comedian Sarah Silverman announced on Twitter Monday that she has split up with British actor Michael Sheen. Silverman tweeted, The great ad Michael Sheen and I consciously uncoupled over Christmas. I mean, not over Christmas. Like, that wasn't the fight that ended it. No fights. We just live in different countries, and it got hard. Felt we should just tell y'all so you stop asking. How's Michael? How's Sarah? E! News noted Sheen, who lives in England, and Silverman, who calls Los Angeles home, met while filming Showtime's Masters of Sex. They have been together since early 2014. Silverman previously dated talk show host Jimmy Kimmel, and Sheen has a teen daughter with his ex-actress Kate Beckinsale. A passing to report, John Mahoney died in Chicago at the age of 77, his publicist announced Monday. The publicist confirmed to TMZ Mahoney died, uh, died in the hospice care Sunday. No cause was, uh, was specified in the report. Mahoney is best known for playing Martin Crane, the father of the titular psychiatrist in the sitcom Frasier from 1993 to 2004. Show co-star Kelsey Grammer, David High Pierce, and Jane Levy's. He also played a recurring role in TV Lands Hot in Cleveland, and his film credits include An American President, Tin Man, Moonstruck, Say Anything, and Eight Men Out. People Magazine said Mahoney, who never married and did not have any children, served three years in the U.S. Army and earned his American citizenship in 1959. Mahoney was 77. The members of NSYNC had nothing but praise for Justin Timberlake's Super Bowl performance. The former boy band congratulated Timberlake on its official Twitter account Sunday after the 37-year-old singer took the stage at Super Bowl 52's halftime show. The group wrote, well done at Jay Timberlake, you killed it, hashtag NFL, hashtag Pepsi halftime show. NSYNC, which, which disbanded in 2002, consisted of Timberlake, Lance Bass, J.C. Chazé, Joey Fatone, and Chris Kilpatrick. Many expected the boy band to reunite and perform with Timberlake at the Super Bowl. Baz tweeted in response to fan speculation, hashtag told ya. He added, but no worries, we'll all be together this spring for the star ceremony, apparently referencing NSYNC's upcoming Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony. Awesome halftime, Justin. Uh, Kilpatrick also praised Tim Blake's performance on his own account. The singer wrote, Wow, 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 best halftime of all time. Way to go at Jay Timberlake. That just makes me proud. Uh, Joy Fatone uh, said, uh, this, uh, denying in January, that a performance would happen. Many were let down by NSYNC's failure to reunite. Singer Demi Lovato were among those to express their disappointment online. She tweeted, but NSYNC, adding several sobbing emojis. Lana Del Rey says she's doing fine after a reported kidnapping threat. The 32-year-old singer updated fans in, on, in a tweet Sunday after a man was arrested outside her concert Friday in Orlando, Florida, for allegedly planning to kidnap her. She wrote, Hey kiddos, I'm doing fine. Thanks for the messages. And tomorrow we'll be in Hialeah. Can't wait to see everyone. Yadi, that means you. The Orlando Police Department said in a press release Saturday on Twitter that the officers arrested 43-year-old Michael Hunt after receiving a tip. Hunt was apprehended one block from Amway Center ahead of Del Rey's show. The press release reads, Hunt was in possession of tickets to the La Del Rey performance and a knife. At no time was he able to make contact with Ms. Grant. Authorities said, Hunt is currently being held at the Orange County Jail on no bond. The charges uh, include aggravated stalking with, an, with credible threat and attempting kidnapping with a weapon. Um... The OPD media released on on arrest of Michael Hunt, who stalked and made threats against singer Lana Del Rey. Uh, Del Rey performed his plan Friday at the Amway Center. The singer, who kicked off her L.A. to the Moon tour in January, will next perform at the Phillips Arena on Tuesday in Atlanta, Georgia. Paul Simon 
has announced his final performing dates as part of his uh, upcoming Homeward Bound, the farewell tour, which begins in May. Simon, known for his solo career as one half of Simon and Garfunkel, will perform on the road for the last time starting May 16th at the Rogers Arena in Vancouver before wrapping up his stay in North America on June 20th at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. Other dates on the North American leg of the tour include stops in Seattle, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Dallas, Chicago, Detroit, and Boston. Legendary musician will then be taking part in a brief tour of Europe that ends with a farewell performance on July 15th at the BST Festival in London with special guest James Taylor and Bonnie Ray. Tickets for the Homeward Bound, the farewell tour, will go on sale February 8th at 9 a.m. in Europe and February 9th at 10 a.m. in North America and the United Kingdom. Simon said in a statement, I've often wondered what it would f- uh, would feel like to reach to the point where I considered bringing my performing career to a natural end. Now I know, it feels a little unsettling with the touching uh, exhilar- exhilaration and something of a relief. He also added, I love making music, my voice is still strong, and my band is a t- uh, tight, extraordinary group of gifted musicians. I think about music constantly. I am very grateful for a fulfilling career and, of course, most of all of the audiences who heard something in my music that touched their hearts. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1911, Ronald Reagan is born. As the 40th President of the United States, the former movie star was called the Great Communicator for his ability to get through to ordinary Americans and give them hope and optimism for their own future and that of their country. Despite lifelong opposition to big government, he was credited with restoring faith in the U.S. government and the presidency after a long era of disillusionment in the wake of Nixon, Vietnam, and an economic hardship under Jimmy Carter. But before his years of Hollywood stardoms and long before Washington, Ronald Reagan was born on this date in 1911 in Tampico, a small town in northwestern Illinois. Though his family was poor, Reagan later remembered his as an idyllic childhood. After playing football at high school and college at Eureka University, he graduated during the Great Depression with few jobs prospects. He soon began working in radio in Iowa, broadcasting for football and other sports. While on a spring training trip with the Chicago Cubs in Los Angeles, Reagan got in touch with a former uh, colleague at WHO in, in Des Moines who connected him with the Hollywood agent. In 1937, Warner Brothers offered Reagan a seven-year contract starting at $200 per week. His first role was far from fresh. He played a radio reporter in the 1937 B-movie Love is on the Air, and the Hollywood Reporter called him a natural. A few years as what he later called the Errol Flynn of the B-pictures, Reagan won the role that he would become known for as the football player George Gipp of Northern Dame. University in Newt Rockney, All-American. The film told the story of the legendary Nor- Northern Dame coach Newt Rockney, played by Pat O'Brien, who died in a plane crash in 1931. Gip was on the walk-on, who uh, became Rockney's star player and died of a throat infection three weeks after his final game. As Reagan later recounted in his memoirs, he convinced the filmmakers who wanted a taller, heavier actor for the part that he could play Gip by showing them a picture of himself in his college form uniform. During his political career, Reagan would reprise the now immortal lines, win one for the Gipper, from his deathbed scene in the film. In addition to making more than 50 films, Reagan became heavily involved in the Screen Actors Guild during his years in Hollywood, served six terms as president, Serving six terms as its president and leading the union through some of the most volatile years in the movie industry. In 1947, when accusations of communism were running rampant in Hollywood, Reagan testified before the House Un-American Activities Committee and refused to name names of suspected communist sympathizers, although an FBI file later revealed that he had in fact named people in secret. Around the same time, Reagan's personal life was in turmoil. His wife, the actress Jane Wyman, divorced him in 1948. His increased involvement in the Screen Actors Guild was reportedly mentioned as a factor in 
and the divorce. Reagan married Nancy Davis, an actress, also in 1952. They had two children, Patricia and Ronald. Reagan and Wyman also had a daughter, Maureen, and adopted a son, Michael. Nancy Reagan would become her husband's closest confidant and advisor during his future political career. In the early 50s, Reagan became familiar to a much wider audience when he began hosting the television program, the General Electric Theater. He also traveled to the country giving speeches at the GE Company spokesman. Though he was a registered Democrat during his years in Hollywood, he changed to his political affiliation to Republican in 1962. Two years later, Reagan made his grand entrance on the political stage with the much-publicized speech at a fundraiser for Barry Goldwater, that year's Republican presidential candidate. In King's Row in 1941, Reagan, who had played a small-town hero whose legs are amputated, he considered, considered his finest film and took a line from it, Where's the Rest of Me?, from the title of his first autobiography published in 1965 before his run for governor of California. The following year, Reagan defeated the incumbent governor of California, Pat Brown, by close to a million votes, taking the next step onto the road to the White House. At 69, Reagan was the oldest man in the history to take office as U.S. president. His career in Hollywood, though to be a weakness at the beginning of his life in politics, turned out to be arguably one of the best his biggest assets. As president, he projected a comforting optimism and weathered setbacks with such success that he became known as the telephone president. His foreign policy legacy, tarnished after the Iran-Contra affair, was redeemed in the eyes of many by the end of the Cold War and the, uh, and the opening of relations with the Soviet Union in the late 1980s. Long-term success of his sweeping tax cuts in Reaganomics may have been debatable, but he managed to maintain his popularity throughout, leaving the White House in the hands of his loyal vice president, George H.W. Bush, in 1988 and maintaining a high approval rating. Six years later, Reagan made the sombering announcement that he had Alzheimer's disease, which would end his public career. He died on June 5, 2004, at the age of 93. And as your entertainment report for Tuesday, February 6, 2018, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R A Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Answer Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.